welcome to today's lecture. <laughs> polar form and the Moore's theorem. Let's start with polar form. <laughs> polar form. Now what you're probably used to is the Cartesian form. Where one would have the x-axis and the y-axis. And to, for an example of a point, say P, say 3, 4, that would be 3 along the x-axis and 4 along the y-axis. But in polar form, or polar coordinates, you have the polar axis and instead of the origin, you have the pole. Now, if we wanted to draw a point on the polar coordinate system, instead of going along here and above along here, you use this length r and this angle theta. So point P would be R theta. Let's do an example. Now an interesting fact about the polar coordinate system is as follows. Let's, point, let's pick the point, say P here, 3 pi by 2, where this is length 3 and this is theta pi by 2. It can also be written as 3, 5 pi by 2, and let me tell you why. <coughs> the angle is always measured from the polar axis and then anti-clockwise. So for this one we've got pi by 2, but if you go another 2 pi round, you then get to 5 pi by 2. Hey! What happens if you go around again? You can go around again. Yeah! If we go around another 2 pi, we can also write it as 3, 9 pi by 2. And that is my interesting fact for the polar coordinate system. One thing you will need to know is how to switch from the polar form to the Cartesian form. Let me show you how. In the Cartesian form, you would write point P as x, y. x and y. In the polar co coordinate system, you would write it r theta. r theta. Mm. Now, this triangle can closely link the polar and Cartesian forms using x equals r cos theta and y equals r sine theta. Mm. So using this, we can switch between forms. So let me show you with an example. Let's take theta to be pi by 4 and r to be root 2. <coughs> so, to get the x value, you would use r as root 2 cos theta, which is pi by 4. And this is equal to 1. Therefore, x value is 1. We do the same for the y component. y is equal to root 2, which is r, sine pi by 4, which is also equal to 1, as pi by 4 is theta. So here we have point P in polar coordinate system form is root 2 pi by 4, and in Cartesian form, it's 1, 1. Now, we're going to powers of complex numbers. So, say you have a complex number z equal to r cos theta plus i sine theta, and you wanted a square z, you would do it as follows.
So here, as we've squared z, we've squared r, and the 2 has gone also down next to the theta. And this is the foundations to De Morf's theorem. In the previous board, I showed you how to square the complex number z. I'm now going to show you the general rule, which is De Morf's theorem. In the previous board, I showed you how to square the complex number z. Now I'm going to show you the more general rule, which is De Morf's theorem. Now, for any integer n, z to the n is equal to r to the n cos n theta plus i sine n theta. Now this is De Moivre's theorem. Let me show you an example. <laughs> Now let's say z. Make up your mind, Sam. Z or z. Z, where r is two and theta is pi by three. Now using De Morf's theorem, we are going to take z, z to the power four. And to do this, we can simply write z to the power of four, two to the power of four, cos four pi by three plus i sine 4 pi by 3, which is obviously equal to 16 minus a half minus i root 3 over 2. And that, my friends, is the Morse theorem. You stay classy, first years. Ha, 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 ha.